Hey, good morning, everybody. Sarasota Tim coming to you from inside the crusher, heading to the gym. Great morning. Had my coffee, took my shower, said my prayers, made my bed, cleaned up the place, left it like new. It's uh, time check 69 degrees at 7 18 a.m. Getting these morning chats out earlier because I have no problem uploading. Uh, the uh, 1080p and after the gym uh, the mailbox opens at 8 I will get over there and check on the uh, mail for to get your Christmas card I know a couple of people are waiting <clears throat> to see if their uh, package and their card arrives <clears throat> and we want to get everybody's in before Christmas because it's countdown what do we got what's today 21st and uh, you know I consider Christmas Christmas Eve, because Christmas morning, Christmas Day, you know, it's all over after you unwrap your presents and everything until the dinner. The dinner is the big thing on Christmas Day um, and the presents in the morning. But Christmas Eve is really the day of anticipation that Santa's coming and, you know, that night is it. And when you wake up, you're going to get all your, your gifts and cards and um, watch all the Christmas movies, the ball games, and all that goes along with it until uh, it's all over <laughs> and then another year before it comes back. And then it's on to uh, New Year's. You know, people put the Christmas behind them and now it's time to hit the gyms, work on the New Year's resolution. They're going to quit smoking. They're going to lose weight. <laughs> Same thing every year. And the, uh, the, uh, the diet... Uh, companies that sell these foods that you buy and order and gym memberships and they this is their best time of the year starting in January uh, so all of these are the things that will be uh, probably people will be doing thinking about doing millions of people uh, they're just like clockwork every year and then of course a lot of them fade to black they don't stick with their program and whatever as for me uh, yesterday I noticed when I got in the shower and I was drying off and I'm I'm flexing my muscles uh, I'm kind of bragging here but I could feel the uh, the biceps and the pecs uh, getting results from going to the gym since I got back from the October vacation where I lost all my tone it doesn't take long folks you stop going to the gym for one month a few weeks and you you're gonna be soft as a a ripe banana and as soon as you get back in the gym it takes a little bit but once a couple of weeks goes by it's been about 10 days of pretty good uh, workouts uh, I had some intermittent times I wasn't going but I'm going very consistently now and I'm really going pretty hard uh, lots of reps you know not necessarily real heavy weights and I do my same routine every time when I go there you know it's always about uh, biceps triceps forearms chest shoulders lats all upper body and when you have muscles and tone uh you can feel it you know when you're putting your shirt on and you know you can feel it in your arms and everything makes you feel good you get good self-esteem but half the battle is to begin you have to begin so if you started going to a gym or even if you're at home and you don't want to go to the gym or there's not one convenient to you and you get a chair and you do incline push-ups you don't have to get down on the floor. That's more advanced. Just get yourself up like this. Put your arms on the chair. And then you can turn around and do dips, you know, to work on your triceps. And you can do uh, hold on to the back of the chair and, and squat down and get up. That works on your glutes and your legs. And, and wake your body up. Wake your muscles up. Start doing, you know, five minutes. Do anything and begin. Half the battle is to begin. And what else have we got? I'll tell you what else we got. It's just a few days before Christmas. And uh, that guy was going so fast in his truck, he got in front of me only to turn right there. He couldn't just follow behind me another 500 feet. All these people in a hurry. Well, let's talk about that. Slow down. <laughs> Slow your life down. Smell the roses. Look around at God's creations. You know, think some thoughts. This morning, I talk about, you know, praying first thing. And 
I listened to a message last night. A, a subscriber of mine uh, sent me a um, a preacher in um, Charlotte. Uh, actually, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, it's near Monroe. Um, my subscriber, Ben, he sent me this preacher at a Baptist church called uh, oh, something Springs. Where is that? He First Baptist of, I can never remember the something Springs. He lives and where this church is. So the church has an app and there's all these sermons on there. And there's a lot of apps you can get that have sermons to inspire you. But when you get up in the morning to pray, do you know what the Bible says about praying? He says, you don't have to come to him with a lot of words. You know, he already knows your needs. So all you have to do is say, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me today my daily bread and forgive me my sins or forgive me my trespasses as I forgive those who trespass against me. And lead me not into temptation, but deliver me from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And the Bible teaches explicitly to say that prayer. And that prayer is all you need to say uh, without all these words about help me get that job, help me meet that person, help my child. But that doesn't mean I, I'm telling you don't say it because I do the same thing. I absolutely add the words. But I don't not say the Our Father prayer. Uh, because that's what he, you know, commands us to do. So I'm talking about all this stuff and I'm preaching it because it's Christmas and it's when Christ was born. And you know what he was born for? I listened to a sermon last night. It's kind of why I wanted to talk about this. Uh, ben sent me this sermon and uh, what is the reason of the season? And I won't go into the 45 minute lesson, but I'll tell you the cliff notes. And it was because the season is that a Savior was born, and he came into this world to find and help and save the lost. Remember the stories in the Bible about the lost coin and the lost son? Uh, he was uh, a, a guy that was really, you know, from a rich family, and he got tired of it, and he asked his father to give him all of his inheritance now, and he wanted to go off and party, and he wanted his money now and, instead of waiting until the father died. The father honored him, gave him his inheritance. He went out. He squandered it on terrible things, and he got broke. And then he ended up, you know, shoveling horse manure. And he got so sick, he got humbled. He finally got down to where, you know, he started to pray. And he said, you know what? I'll go to my father. My father's compassionate. I'll just ask him if I can, you know, work as one of his servants. Not to give me my bed back. I'll sleep in the servants' quarters but this is no life. I need, I need to go back. So he goes back. The father sees him and the father throws a party. It's the same story about the one with the, with the shepherd had a hundred sheep and one was lost and he rejoiced and threw a party when he found the one that was recuperated, uh, that recovered. And so when the son came back, he put a ring on his finger, a robe on him and bathed him and cleaned him and put him back into his stature and gave a party to him. And People were asking, this guy did you wrong. Why are you doing this? He goes, once my law, my son was lost, but now he is found. He's found himself. And when God sees you, come to him and repent. That's the first thing he wants. And, and you ask him to come in your life. He throws a party. There's a party in heaven. The, the angels are rejoicing because another lost soul that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ into their life yet and believing in God has now become part of the the fold, part of the family, and there's a big celebration. And so no matter what you've done, no matter who you are, even if you've been bad on comments on YouTube, or you've done some awful things that only you know about, whatever it is, folks, there is redemption. There is forgiveness. And thank God for that. It's tough for me to forgive people. It's tough for you to forgive people. But Jesus says, I am the judge, not you. And if you truly repent and turn from your ways and ask him into your heart and make it today, 
Remember what I talked about in a video before? Don't say I'm going to start that tomorrow. Don't say I'm going to start my New Year's resolution on the 1st. I'm going to quit drinking and start losing weight, go to the gym, quit smoking, stop cussing, start treating people right, being kind, being better a driver, letting people go. In. Don't start that tomorrow. Start it today. Be a person of integrity. Be a person that does things when nobody's looking. You know, that you, because you, there's somebody is looking. He's looking. And he rewards you. People that try to do things in public on a soapbox and want to, you know, get, the Bible teaches they got their reward. You know, when you got uh, recognition from people that you gave, you did, you did something like that, you got your reward. It's when people don't see. Like, you know, anything that you do in private uh, that God can see that you're trying to do good you will get a reward from him, especially if it's being kind and love towards other people. And so make today the reason that, you know, you're going to be like the lost son and you're going to get over yourself about uh, your high and mightiness that, you know, you've built this wealth, you've built this business, you've built whatever you think you got. Uh, you know, you're this, you're that. You know, the humble shall be exalted and the exalted shall be humbled. So there could be a day, if you think that you're riding that crest of success right now, just remember who gave it to you and who's in control of it all and how it can all be taken away today by either sickness or hitting by, getting hit by a bus. Anything, folks. Always be in good standard and good standings, I should say, with the Lord. And always ask Him about anything you're going to do, about any decision, uh, you know, and and just try to be that humble person. Try to, you know, Jesus washed feet. And uh, he went and washed the feet of his uh, <clears throat> disciples. And one of the disciples says, oh, no, Lord, let me wash yours. Please don't, don't wash my feet. He says, unless you let me wash your feet and you do of the same as I'm teaching, you shall not inherit heaven. So God teaches in the Bible all of this lower than people. People want to exalt themselves and act powerful. You ever meet people like that? You can meet them every day. When I used to be in sales, the, the boss that would sit back there, you know, he has the secretary, you know, the goalie, uh, block him from all. Now, there's a certain amount of that they, they need to do, but um, he, he's this big, powerful person that you can't, you know, he's the, the wizard behind the curtain. You know, humble yourself. You know, meet your customers. Be friendly. Don't be so powerful and so good. You got that power because it was given to you. And so on that note right there, folks, just I continually harp, be friendly, express love. God says of all the commandments, love is the number one thing. And when this Christmas comes, you know, remember what this, the, the season's about. It's about a Savior was born, a Savior that came in to find people, to get the word out, to find lost people souls and to save them that were lost and to die on a cross and shed blood because there's no goodness you can do. There's no act of giving. There's no check you can write. There's nothing you can do to get into heaven except one thing, and that's to confess your sins and to accept Lord Jesus Christ in your life. Now, that's my belief. I know a lot of people watch me that don't believe in Jesus Christ. You have a different religion. I think God reads our hearts because no one knows another man's heart except God, the creator. You know, I'm just what I am and I respect what you are. As long as we are almighty, you know, looking at almighty God in our lives, I think that's what's important. Okay, I digress. Now, it's the reason for the season. And, you know, it's not about giving somebody a new iPhone, an iPad, a new car, um, you know, impressing them with new, you know, expensive necklaces and diamonds and all that. If you have the money and you want to do that, hey, knock yourself out, right? I'm not saying that's bad. Just because I don't have the money to buy a $50,000 Rolex doesn't mean I wouldn't wear one. But I do want to make everybody remember really what the season's about. You know, at least keep that foremost. You know, a Savior's been born. You know, and, and keep that up front. Give all your gifts. 
celebrate it the way you like, whether it be Christmas Eve, Christmas morning, you know, make sure that you keep that first. Once you get joy going and you get those bubbling springs going in your heart and in your mind and you're smiling again, you crack that that old clay face you got of that, that frown, that countenance that's kind of like, people see that. They, you know, I see it every day, people's countenance. And then you can talk to them. And if you get on some kind of common ground, it breaks. And you're like, wow, I thought this person would be somebody I could never really get along with. They look kind of like angry. So don't let this change this. Smile. You know, look, people's the eyes are the soul. Let people see your soul. Do the things that we used to do before we had all of this crazy technology with the internet and ways to disparage people. You know, just think about it. When we were young, you couldn't be a bad person on the internet and say terrible things about people. You couldn't do it. We didn't have it. You weren't around. There was no way you could. And of course, the, it's vice versa. There was no way people could do YouTube and, and put something out there either. Things were much simpler. And, uh, you know, remember when we had to sit at home and wait till someone called or we would have to wait till we got home and check our answering machine? I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself now. But look how many things, look how the world has changed. And while there's greatness in all these new technologies, uh, like with this cell phone I have that I'm using to video and I can put out some content and I can call China if I want to. Look how much simpler uh, things were in the days before all of this. And look at the badness that a lot of these things have brought uh, that make people use it, misuse it. And so when people are going to do the misusing and they're caught up in all that, you have got to purge that from your life. You have got to uh, ignore it. You got to learn how to turn it off. I did it a couple of years ago and I sneaked a couple of times in the beginning. And then I, I saw, hey, they're saying the same thing. And I'm starting to feel the same thing. They're angering me. They're trying to divide me from you. They're trying to make me think that you're different if you are buying that other side. If you're on the blue side or the red side or the white side or the black side or the, the left or the right and all these things they try to do. Because it's all about getting you to watch them and listen to them so they can sell advertising and also so you don't see what they're doing robbing us and changing everything and taking our rights away. There's a lot of badness going on, folks. We have a wonderful, wonderful, beautiful country with some beautiful people in it. But we have a government that is a bit to be desired for and the media and there's a lot of evil there, a lot of evil on every side. And I don't have the answers. I don't know where it's going to go, except that if you just ignore it, you'll be better off and just deal with the people because the people are naturally benevolent. People are just naturally who God created us to be. So don't be influenced. Don't, don't choose a side. Don't listen to them. Don't, don't listen to these people trying to dog other people on other YouTube channels or other websites or other churches or other things. Think for yourself. You know, look at the person. Judge for yourself. You you think. Don't let other people think for you. You have critical thinking. You've got a brain. You've got a heart. God can nudge you. He can tell you that you need to stay away from that or that's not good or that person is, you know, good or bad. He says, you'll know them by their fruit. So don't, don't let others influence you. So many do. So many are just followers and so many people are just not thinking, you know? And so I'm going to end the video, start thinking, wake up, exercise, pray, smile, break that countenance, open those eyes, put that grin out there, Give a little wave to somebody. Nod at them when you walk by. How you doing? Good morning. You know, everybody. You go into a lot of the um, uh, stores and Chick-fil-A and stuff like that where they're like, my pleasure. You know, and you feel good about that, don't you? When you get acknowledged and, and oh, my pleasure, you know. And uh, when people, you know what I'm talking about, do those things too. You don't have to work for a company. Slow down. Drive right. 
have that integrity, be that person that nobody can see, only God, and just do what you know is right. Have integrity. Get rid of debt. Collect your Social Security at 62 and crush it.